All right, thank you, Shane. Hello, Sonic Revolution. How are you guys today? So yeah, this was totally unplanned, but uh, Stephen and I decided we would show up today, and we got we got the blessing to to visit. So we're very happy to be here with you guys. And so Stephen, I think what we're gonna do, correct me if I'm wrong here, like a little little planned uh, thirty minute Q and A with you guys about all things Sonic and Sonic Boom. Does that sound good? Yeah. Cool. Um, so also you can ask us like personal questions about Sonic, like what's your favorite Sonic game, you know, etc. All that kind of stuff. Happy to answer it. Um, you guys may know me, my name is Aaron Weber, I work at Sega, I'm one of the brand managers who worked on Sonic. Did anyone play uh, Sonic Generations? Yeah. Good. I, I, didn't, I didn't make that game, but uh, a lot of us at Sega got to help on that game, and that's one that I look that fondly on. Steven, as you guys may know, is uh, the producer for the Wii U version of Sonic Boom. So Stephen, I'll let you introduce yourself real quick. Hey everybody. Uh, you know, it's great to be here. Um, I'm always uh, impressed, uh, you know, by the Sonic fan base. Um, you know, Aaron's been involved with uh, Sonic for much longer than I have, but uh, I've always, you know, admired all the sort of creativity and, and, you know, you guys coming together to create these sort of events and just the sheer amount of uh, you know, discussion and artwork and, and just great stuff online. So, you know, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for, you know, loving Sonic uh, as much as we do and, and, you know, putting forth all of the uh, the great stuff that you guys do and artwork and videos and, and everything. So, you know, give you guys a round of applause for that because I, I think it's great. So, being the, you know, Sonic Revolution sort of uh, event, uh, Aaron and I, you know, we were discussing, what was it, like a week, a week and a half ago again, because um, we wanted to come down, but we weren't sure, because as you may know, E3 was this last week, and that's generally a pretty tiring experience, um, to say the least. Um, it's just a lot of uh, uh, standing and, and doing interviews and demos over and 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 over. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Fortunately, we flew back on Friday, and we had a day at home up in uh, San Francisco, and then we jaunted on the plane, woke up, I think, like, 5 o'clock in the morning, I think, so I, I apologize if I am a little bit tired, uh, but I'll try to answer the questions as coherently as possible. Um, but as Aaron said, you know, it's, uh, any of you guys want to ask, it doesn't necessarily be about Sonic Boom, I can answer questions about 3DS, the cartoon, the Wii U, anything about Sonic Boom. Uh, I can give you my personal opinions on Sonic and things like that, um, and then, you know, Eric can fill in, so I don't know how you want to do the questions or anything like that, uh, raise hands or whatever, but, uh, you know, feel free to ask away. What's your favorite Sonic game? Um, you know, that, that's, that's, uh, I have, I have several Sonic games, but the, the one really that, um, always was a fond uh, memory for me is the first Sonic Adventure. And the reason for that is, um, back in the day I used to be on the press side of things, and I used to write for a PlayStation magazine, ironically, uh, for quite a few years, thanks. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and um, but at, at, at nights I actually helped form a, a Dreamcast website with some friends called Dreamcast Life, and we used to use, because uh, we used to go to Japan and other places a lot, and we used to go and film and go to the new Sega New Challenge conferences and things like that and film stuff. So I was really excited about the Dreamcast. Um, and, uh, you know, went to, went to Japan for the launch of the Dreamcast and, and everything, and actually wrote a fact about the Godzilla VMU game, if anyone ever played Godzilla <laughs> VMU game. Um, but uh, I remember distinctly um, waiting for Sonic Adventure, and um, I had gone, because um, I was in California, and my parents lived in uh, Oregon, I was going back for, for a holiday, and um, I had it shipped, I, couldn't, I didn't know the timing, so I had it shipped, the Japanese version of Sonic Adventure, to Oregon, just in case, and, and so I, I got there, and I hadn't gotten there, and I was so excited, but each, literally every day, I was just sitting there waiting for it to come, waiting for it, waiting for it to come, and then it came, and um, I just spent the rest of my vacation in front of the TV playing that game, so um, it was just, you know, the transition to that, that 3D and, and on the Dreamcast and just my excitement, it's... It's, uh, that experience, I think, is probably one of my most favorite, and that's why I love that game so much. It's a good answer. Oh, man. 
Um, my favorite game would be divided into two eras, really is how, how I would do it. If you're asking my like, favorite game of the old, the old ages, the Sega Genesis, uh, I would have to say Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and though my story really isn't quite as good as Steven's, then mine, mine is really just more like, uh, we, we got a Genesis, and that was like what my, my little brother and I had wanted for the longest time, right? We wanted it for Christmas, we didn't get it that year for Christmas, and that was like heartbreaking. But the next year, we did get a Genesis, and then not long after, we ended up getting Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and you know, my little brother was always Tails, and as you guys know, Tails is great in Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and in Sonic 2, because Tails is the guy that gets everything done, and you lose no rings. <laughs> It's like, there's a bad guy over there. All right, Tails, go get it. Oh, oh, Tails, you, you got killed. Well, you took out the bad guy, so I'll just run ahead. Thanks, man. Thanks, Tails. <laughs> and Sonic 3 Knuckles was so cool because it was like, it, it was, you know, two games locked onto each other, and the amount of content was so huge. But I also really liked that first moment when you get all of the Super Emeralds with either Tails or Knuckles, and you go, wait, wait, there's, there's a Super Tails? Yeah. What? And then all these little flickies come on screen and start destroying all the robots. It's just yeah. such an amazing moment. Yeah. Uh, so I love, I love Sonic 3 and Knuckles as one of my like, older games. If I was looking towards the newer generation, uh, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, I thought was, like, was a great one. And uh, most recently, Sonic Generations. Really, really love that one. So I, I totally cheated and answered three times. Three that was three games, I know. All the Sonic games are my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, even 06. Yes! <laughs> really good music. Yeah. Right? No, like, like seriously, really, really good music yeah. in that game. Yes, let's, let's take another question from the audience right here. All right. You can make one spin off game centering around one other Sonic character aside from Sonic himself. What character do you choose and what type of game are they in? Uh, I already know what I'm going to say, so I'm going to give it to Steven. <laughs> My... <laughs> well, since Steven went and spoiled it already, thanks Steven, <laughs> my game would be a first person horror puzzle shooter game featuring Big the Cat. <laughs> You want to kickstart that? I'll see what we can do. <laughs> Steven's still thinking, so I'll go into more detail about my game while he thinks. In this game, Froggy has been kidnapped by Alex Kidd. <laughs> Alex Kidd is unhappy because Sonic has completely taken his mascot status, and so in order to get revenge, he, he, he leashes out on one of the Sonic characters, but completely misses the fact that not many people know about Big over Sonic. It's kind of Alex's mistake. Sorry, Alex. You, you got anything yet? Do I need to keep giving more details? What does he shoot? Sort of general idea. Uh, I like Tails a lot. Uh, I'm a big fan of Tails. Um, I think that an interesting game would be one at the beginning where um, he's at the doctor's office and he's sort of diagnosed. He, he finds out that he's uh, deathly allergic to bees. Um, and Charming sort of is in here and he's like, I don't want to be friends with Tails. And, uh, you know, he's always chasing Tails through the game and Tails is like, you gotta get away from me because uh, I'm allergic. But Charming doesn't know that. And so it's the whole sort of this endless chase uh, throughout uh, the world uh, as Charmy is uh, player two is Charmy and, and Tails is player one. There you go. So, so it's like player two can't physically touch player one. Right? You have to like keep them from touching each other throughout the entire game. That's a really cool concept. We should. Can, can one of you guys make that game for us? There, there you go, fans. The challenge has been laid out. That's the game that we need you to make. Let's take another question from the audience. All right. Well, we did one on this side. We're going to jump to this side in the back there. Yep. Yeah? Sure. Yeah, okay. Um, personally, I'm, I'm rooting for the Dreamcast still. Um, 
you know, you know, it, ever since '99, it's it's still going in my eyes. Um, some some people claim that I'm blind and that the Sega killed the system or something. I don't. They don't know what they're talking about. Still making games. They're still. Come on, those are rumors. Don't trust the internet. Jeez, guys. Um, no, but seriously, I think it's it's kind of exciting to see the console wars heating up a bit. Like we saw it last year too, but. There was kind of this lull, right, where it's like it was the end of the PS3 and the Xbox, and it was just kind of getting quiet. And so seeing the companies getting back into it and kind of making fun of each other and all of that stuff, it reminds me a bit of the old Sega Nintendo stuff yeah. back in the day. But I, I just personally kind of like watching it. I think that was, it's just really fun to see, and it pushes each side to do better and better to kind of one-up the competition. So I think it's exciting. Um... I can't really comment too much on what's going on at E3. I had like 22 minutes of free time each day, um, which I uh, tried to eat a chicken Caesar salad as quickly as possible. Um, oh. No, um, it's true. That's true, actually. Um, it's very sad, because normally I've gone to every three, E3 except two, and I love going to E3 because I love to check out all the games and stuff like that, but this time, because um, this is this little project thing we got going on, um, it's it was difficult to get away. But I agree with Aaron, like, I love that the, the, this, I think this generation is going to be pretty exciting. Um, you know, I think we're returning to a little bit of the sort of the poking fun and jabbing, and everyone's being a little bit more sophisticated. It's not directly like, you know, Genesis does what Nintendo, but, uh, um, you know, I think in their own way, uh, Sony and especially Microsoft are uh, sort of pointing and poking at each other, jabbing where they can. So I like that. I mean, it makes it a little bit fun. You know, I don't subscribe necessarily to the, the whole fanboy stuff, but it's like, it's kind of cool to have a, a console um, you root for or, or whatever, you know, developer or company you root for, and it kind of brings excitement, right? It kind of brings a little bit of that back and forth that's um, been passive a little bit, I think, last generation in some ways. So uh, I'm just excited. I mean, there's a lot of great games um, that are coming out that I'm really excited, and more so a lot of independent games, which is, which is great. Like, we're seeing that now a lot of the indie games... You know, just going back to the Dreamcast, the sheer number of like shooters and RPGs and stuff that are still coming out for the Dreamcast, uh, whether it's Kickstarter or on their own, which is which is awesome. The fact that you can still you know order a Dreamcast game uh, from an indie developer is awesome. So I think this is this is just a great great time for gaming overall. So it's great. Next question. Do you want me to be in the What's that? Uh, let me get this guy. I'm the orange here. Oh my god. <laughs> are you are you passing on this question, Steve? You can pass on a question. I think it's, it's fair to say pass if you don't want to answer it. I'll I'll um I'll I'll, I'll, I'll think of something. I feel that you're more eloquent with your words. Uh okay, let's see. Um so my my favorite uh all of the animated TV shows, for me it's just it's personal bias, it's just the one that I grew up watching. That's the reason this is my favorite, so nothing like against the rest. Um, and it's totally not because I saw it on the agenda for today. Uh, Sonic Saturday Morning, with Saturday Morning. With, with the Freedom Fighters and the darker storyline, and like everything's, everything's pretty terrible in, in terms of like how their, their situation is faring in that entire show. It's very dark, but I like that they're, they're always, you know, it's, it's very optimistic, and you kind of watch tales grow in that show. There's a lot of really cool things that happen with the characters. Um, the one that I saw the least of, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's like my least favorite, but I was, the one that I didn't see much of was Sonic Underground. But I do know that there's a lot of people out there that really, like, love Underground, and especially Woo! that... <laughs> and, and especially the opening theme song. Uh, I watched someone do, like, a karaoke of that at Summer of Sonic my very wow. first year that I attended, and that was... It was magical, let me tell you. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. For us, do you want to answer? Should we just move on to the next one? Uh, I think I would echo you. I'd probably save all of that. I mean, uh, the one I've watched the least is Underground, because that seems a little bit different for me. Um, but, you know, Sonic and, and um, Saturday Night is definitely, uh, I remember fondly as far as watching them. And, and even actually, every so often, I'll pop them on Netflix. I think almost all, all the episodes for all three of those are on Netflix now. So, um, if you're not. Subscriber to Netflix, you should get it just for sign cartoons. <laughs> you want to choose? Go ahead. Blue shirt. Uh, if you read the comic series, if so, what is your favorite issue or favorite story arc? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
You know, I have to admit that I'm very sporadic with the comics. Um, I'll read it here and there, and it's more so because, you know, Archie will send us a bunch of collections of stuff. Um, <laughs> I did like the, uh, the whole Mega Man sort of crossover recently, because that's the one that actually had, like, uh, the, we actually got, like, all the issues in the, and I think the trade paperback, too. I thought that was very cool that they did that. I, I liked a lot of the stuff in there. Um, and I'm always curious, uh, you know, to see where uh, the Tails doll shows up. Uh, <laughs> Because it's, you know, it's amazing how that has sort of spiraled and, and, and got its own sort of thing. And uh, um, it's, it's always a, a neat surprise to me where he shows up in just weird, weird places. All right, so when I was a kid, I grew up on the original issues, like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, on and on, up to the Metal Sonic arc, I think was, was 25, and the, was it End, End Zone Doomsday? Was End Game. End Game, that was what it was, which was the arc leading up to the 50th issue. And those will always stay in my mind. It's like, wow, this is like some crazy stuff happening. Like a uh, and Sa Sally got like killed in, in those, right? Like it, it, it kind of hey. killed and then comes back or something, right? Uh. Spoilers, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But it was pretty dark for like for this comic that I'm reading at like the age of 12 or 11 or however old that was. I was I was just completely enthralled with it. Um, more recently, I was really excited for for the the Sonic Universe issue that was based around Sonic All Stars Racing Transformed. Did anyone anyone read that? Yeah. yeah. That one was fun because I got to work on on that with Archie. Um, so I was, I was the guy at Sega that got to go to Sega Japan and, and be like, all right, so here's the script, we gotta get this approved, and here's the, the early like pencils, and like, let's get that approved, then we gotta make these changes. And, and it was crazy, because we're working with all these different people, because you've got Vice from Skies of Arcadia, you've got I.I. I. from Super Monkey Ball, yeah. you've got Danica Patrick in there. Like, it, was, it was like licensing nightmare when you think of like, all the different people that have to approve this, but it was so cool when it finally you know, came together, and so I, I thought that was a really, really cool issue too, and, and definite props to Archie, man. I, I love the work that those guys do, and, and they're always such happy people when we meet them at like the shows and get to talk with them. So, go Archie, love you guys. Yep. Okay, this is a question for Gary Spring. Um, he asks um, why they changed Sonic iconic shoes but kept Knuckles Lego design shoes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So the whole reason, I mean, I don't know how much, how many of you guys have followed the redesigns that we did for um, Sonic Boom. Um, it is, uh, you know, sometimes still a polarizing thing, I'm sure, uh, especially um, Knuckles. Uh, but uh, you know, I knew it was, I knew we were gonna, this was gonna way it was gonna be, and and it, it, it is tough because it's we we've been looking at these characters for you know over 20 years. Um, it's not an easy change. It's not an easy thing. And he's gone through a couple iterations and minor changes over the years. But um, our goal was really, um, in some ways, to try to further expand um, the Sonic audience. Quite honestly, um, not to alienate anyone or anything like that. And so we spent a lot of time. Um, you know, a long time looking at those characters over and over and over again. And, um, and you know, we try to uh, remain sort of true to the essence of the, the character designs, um, but we really wanted to um, adjust them so that from a silhouette perspective, and I'm, I'll get back to the, the question, but I'm gonna derail a little bit. And, and, and uh, the key and crucial thing is that the silhouettes, right? So if someone who's not really familiar with Sonic I don't know, there's, I think there's six people in, in the world that aren't familiar with Sonic, but uh, for those six people, if they um, look at these characters, um, we wanted them to make sure that they understood who these characters were, um, what their role was in the team, right? Because especially for Sonic Boom in relation to the, the cartoon and the games, this is an ensemble cast now, it's not just Sonic. And I know Amy and the other characters have been around, but they've always sort of been like a half step behind, right? Um, sort of like Tom Cruise and whatever his wife is at the time. Um, the, uh, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I was thinking out loud. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it was very crucial that you look at him and you look at, like, you know, Tails, for example. He's got the aviation goggles now. He's got the belt, the reinforced belt, and, and, and he's generally holding a wrench. And, you know, you look at that, and even if you're not familiar with Tails, you're like, yeah, he's like a pilot guy. And he's, uh, you know, he's going to be a tinker guy, right? He's got tools and stuff like that. 
The thing with Knuckles is that, you know, yeah, in the classic things, he has, he has the big hands, but his scale-wise ratio, it's, um, you know, it's the same as Sonic, pretty much. And that's a tough sell to kids. When you, when you show it to kids who are not inherently that familiar with Sonic, it's hard for them to sort of understand that, that strength perception. Yes, he has the bigger hands, but it's still a weird thing for them because they're used to the age of like the Incredibles and the Avengers and, and things like that where it's very clearly defined who the big guy is, the strong guy. Um, we, need that, we need Knuckles to be that in a very clear way if that's the sort of player that you like. And it's, it's a similar archetype. It's like in Team Fortress and WoW, it's in many, many sort of types of games that, that brooding sort of strong guy. Um, so, um, but we didn't want to change, we want to change him as much as we need to, but not much. So we really pulled our hair out, I had a lot more hair back then, um, <laughs> uh, over just decisions, like what are the shoes going to be like, and what color, and, and you know, Sonic arm color, and which, you know, people uh, point out, and just like little quills, and people think, why do you have little quills and stuff like that? You know, that takes like a month to decide that. Um, so it, it's, it was just very crucial for us to really, um, um, get that messaging across, like who is Sonic, who is Knuckles, who is Amy, who is Tails, um, and get that across to people who are not so familiar, but still retain sort of the essence of them. Um, so we tried to not change more than we needed to, and in the cases of Knuckles, and, and you know, we didn't want to ch you know, adjust his shoes much, we just adjusted his size already. Sonic really, for the most part, is, you know, strengthened out of the bed, he's got a little more quills, and he's got the neckerchief, and, uh, um, the sports tape to emphasize his speed stuff. But as far as individual choices, like I said, we try to retain the key components of the, of the team. Um, you know, it wasn't something that we did lightly. You know, I said this to, your, to you fans wholeheartedly. Um, some of the decisions as far as what we did, the characters took a year to decide on. So it wasn't something that we decided on like a week or two weeks or three weeks. I was, I was looking at those characters for a long time. Um, and we kept going back and forth. And also you have to keep in mind that it has to work within the confines of you know, the TV show and the 3DS and, and the toys and stuff like that. So we had to keep a lot of that stuff. You know, sometimes we'd make choices and decisions about how these characters would be. And it's like, you know, the t licensing guys say like, well, that's really tough to do, right, in the licensing line. Or it's, it's tough to represent this in the cartoon. So, you know, when asked questions like, why did you keep some stuff and why didn't you retain it? We, ch we only tried to change stuff that we felt was really crucial to change. Um, and that's sort of how we came up with the, the character designs that we did. One of the things that I thought was really interesting is, as you guys know, Sonic's arms are blue in Sonic Boom, right? But the funny thing is, if you go up to somebody on the street and you're like, what color is Sonic the Hedgehog's arms? At least half of them will say blue. blue. That's right, because when you, when you picture Sonic in your mind, you're like, oh, he's a blue hedgehog, therefore his arms are blue. And I thought that was really interesting because a lot of the fans noticed that and they're like, oh, his arms are blue, you know, whether they liked it or not. But then a lot of people were like, uh, weren't, they, weren't they always blue? And I thought that was just a really interesting kind of, kind of piece that came out of all of that. So, really good question. That was the hard one. We knew that one was going to come up. So thank you uh, to whoever asked that one. I think that was from online. So thank you. Let's, well, since we only have a bit of time left, let's, we're going to try and rapid fire through some more questions to get um, some done for you guys. Right here. Um, so, I guess my question is for both of you. Uh, what advice could you give to someone who wants to have Sonic or video games as a profession, as a career? Because Sonic's what inspired me to want to get into video games, so I tried studying computer science at college, and that didn't turn out so well, so now I'm in business and about to graduate, and I'm afraid that I may not be able to get into the video game industry, so I want to ask if you can provide any advice for people like me who were in their early 20s, but want to do yeah. something video game related. What, what kind of business? Just in general? Uh, just uh, information systems. That's okay. Concentration. Okay. So, um, the, the good news is, uh, the industry is probably not what a lot of you expect. Some, some of you imagine the video games industry is like, you, you walk into this beautiful lobby adorned with golden rings and there are palm trees, and it's like, oh, and it's like, welcome to Sega, and the doors open and Sonic's there like with a hot chocolate for you, like, hey, <laughs> At least that's, that's what I had imagined when I went in for my interview about six years ago, over six years ago. And the video game industry, the, the good news is, there are people of all sorts of professions. There are people that have business degrees, there are people that have IT degrees, there are people that have finance degrees. All of these things are important for a company to run. So a company like Sega, a company like Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft, you name all of them, right? They're going to have these people that maybe didn't go to, to school for game design, but that are working in the industry. 
Um, I actually studied uh, PR when I was in college for a little bit. Um, and, and what do you know, like when you end up doing a camera interview on a live stream or something like that, it's like, hey, that PR class was actually really helpful. Or the speech and debate course I took in high school was really helpful. And so there's a lot of ways that you can find, find your way into the industry with degrees that you may not think um, would apply. So the best advice I can give you, though, and I've given this to a few other people, is don't give up. That's the best advice that I can give you because the video games industry is not really that easy to get into sometimes. And it's about knowing the right people, it's about having the right resume and being really impressive with all the stuff that you've got. So make sure that whenever you do submit your resume that it is as robust as possible. So that when they're looking at, and we've got 200 candidates here, you want yours to stand out so they go, oh, this guy, let's get him in for an interview. So it may not happen the first time, it may not happen the fifth time, you never know, right? But don't give up is the best advice I can give you. And with that, I'll pass it to Stephen. Um, so, uh, the other two points I'd probably add is, and this is a tough one, because a lot of people want to get in, get in the games industry and they're not quite sure what they want to do, so, but it's hard to go in and not know, you need to be very focused. Um, so there's a lot of different professions and fields, and so I would, I would suggest really digging into sites, you know, like sites like Gamasutra, uh, that cover the industry, things like that. And, and, and read articles and see what your particular sort of talent or interest lies in because, you know, when you say I want to be in the, uh, the, the games industry, that, I mean, that's a mere thing. That's like from the guy that makes the banner at, on E3 in the wall to the, uh, you know, the, to the QA guy or the, uh, the guy who's designed the UI for the game, right? There's so, it's such a large field of stuff, um, you know, like Aaron went down uh, community stuff and he's doing marketing down. I'm doing production stuff. So um, I would suggest really find out what interests you, what aspects of the game industry interests you, even if it's a couple things, and really read up on that and really understand it. And the other thing is, of course, which is the always the classic thing, and it's still honestly true, is, is going in into a, a, a QA sort of position. Um, QA is, is such a vital thing to the game, but also it, it's a really um, good way to understand how games get made, right? Like, you see the games in the worst possible state that they can be in, and you really, with your interactions with, with the production team and other groups, really come to understand all the little, little bits and pieces and stuff. So, you know, I would really narrow down what you want to do, and if you can, you know, even temporary, try to get a, a QA position just so you can get your foot in the door and, and sort of understand what makes games. Okay, guys, we have two minutes left. You ready for the rapid fire? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, let's go to the back. Yeah, merch guy. Um, I know that there were several rejected designs, like eyeball sign and like lizard thing or something, um, or with scales or. Like the original designs? Yeah. Is there ever a chance oh. to ever see that concept there? Yeah. Um, yeah. mm, that, that is tough to say. It's probably locked up in the vaults of Sega Japan somewhere. <laughs> Which means let's, let's take another question uh, from this side in the back. Yep. This more Sager, like, question, but, uh, when are we going to get Shenmue 3? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I really hope no one's going to ask that question. <laughs> I, I don't have any news on that one. I, I played and beat the first two games and loved them though, so I, I know that feeling, man. I know that feeling. Let's take another question right here. Uh, uh, are there going to be any other playable characters aside from the main four in Sonic Boom? Um. <laughs> no, uh, let's just say that uh, right now, I, I have to just be careful how I say stuff. Um, no, uh, you know, the main thing is really we're focusing on the Wii U on those four characters and then um, on the 3DS, you know, Styx, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Styx, the character. Yeah, yeah Styx the battery, yeah, exactly, she's awesome. Um, so she is actually the fourth playable character in the 3DS one, so, you know, at least we're, we're introducing another character. Um, we're really focusing on four, that four and the messaging of those four. Um, you know, that's all I can sort of say right now. Um, and, you know, gosh, you know, four, four key characters, just, it took a lot of time just to develop those guys out and their abilities and stuff, because they have a lot of move sets and things like that. So, uh, at least as far as the answer to your question right now, we're just focused on the, the four, Amy Seals, Sonic, Sonic Knuckles, and then Sticks on the 3DS. So, as we are out of time, uh, I'll ask one more question to you guys, since Steven and all the teams at both BRB and Senzara have put a ton of, of time and effort into getting those characters playable. You guys for a long time were like, we want more playable characters. So are you guys really excited to finally play as Tails, Knuckles, Amy, and now Styx, as well as Sonic? <laughs>
There you go, Steven. All right, well, thank you guys very much. Fighting game. Yep, we're a soft fighting game. And uh, yeah, with that, we're going to pass it off to Shane for the next part of the show.